What's up everyone, Mikey Bell here with Outdoor Adventure Training, bringing to you another follow along core routine workout. This is the Ponderosa core workout that is in our base camp program very early on, on day two in fact, of stabilization phase. This is all about core stability. So while these exercises by themselves maybe aren't super difficult, if we really focus on that neuromuscular activation that we're really working on in stabilization phase, you will feel this and it will change the way that you move and how you perform in your activities. Even the most advanced athletes can benefit from these simple but very effective exercises. You don't really need much equipment at all for this routine, just a mat. Having some sort of a stick or a band is excellent for our warm up that we're gonna dive into now. Let's get to it. We'll open the mobile app, go to the Ponderosa core workout. You can see we have a bit of a dynamic warm up to start with, and then we're diving into a circuit of five exercises four times. So this first one here around the world, you can use a wooden dowel like I have in the corner here. I really like doing this with a band. It's pretty simple. You could do this sitting, standing, kneeling. I'll do it kneeling just to demo. But all I'm gonna do is keep my hands pretty wide. And my goal is to come out and around. That's the around the world component. I like the band because it tends to pull my arms closer together, but they're both great. I use both quite often. So while we're doing this, I'm not letting my shoulders come up, I'm trying to keep the scapula down and back. Really awesome technique for improving shoulder mobility opening up the pectorals, anterior deltoids, <laughs> which most people are quite tight in. So from the lateral view, pretty simple, just really trying to open up here. You can also work a little bit of angle into this one. So coming around this way, back around the other way, reversing the action. This is something you could do all day, every day, <laughs> and always improve upon. Okay, trunk rotations. trunk rotations. I am gonna stand up for this one. Pretty simple, just good athletic stance. You've probably done this intuitively quite a bit. We'll add a little bit of intention to it. So this is a core routine. I'm not just all loosey-goosey flopping my body around. I'm actively thinking about engaging my core as I rotate, switching it back the other way. You can get a little dynamic bend in the hips, try to rotate some. You can also be a little more locked from the hips down. Just rotate the upper body. We're just starting to get warmed up here for a little bit of movement. Love doing this one. Try to get a little more rotation each time. Awesome. Walk and lunge and reach. Pretty simple. All I'm doing, stepping forward into my low walking lunge. This hand is gonna come up. I'm gonna lean over, getting a really big stretch through that whole lateral chain. And back to center, pushing up, switching to the other leg, sinking down. You can omit the reach if balance is an issue, but really we're focusing on opening up the hip flexors, getting that core activated again. Get one more here. Another one that you could really do endless amounts of. Inchworm. The inchworm, one of my favorites. So all you're gonna do, trying to keep your legs as straight as possible. If you need to bend to get to the ground, that's okay. Walking the hands out to a plank position. On our toes, one step at a time, as much as we can, feeling a good stretch. All the way back out to center, to our high plank. If you can only go this far with keeping a straight or minimally flexed knees, that's okay before you walk it out the other way. A couple more this way, walking it out. Plank, small steps on the toes. All the way up. Hopefully you're starting to get a warm up going. <laughs> High knee hugs, grabbing just below the knee on the shin, pulling that leg up. Goal here is to get a little bit of a stretch the posterior chain hamstring glute also getting the hip flexors activated again although this workout we're doing is very much a core routine hip flexors are part of your core so we're going to be working them <laughs> a couple more of these guys 
And then we got one more dynamic stretch scapular to do, which is really a activation technique. We're doing scapular push-ups. So we're in the push-up position and I'm just working on retraction of the shoulder blades and protraction. Notice I'm not bending my elbows. I'm sinking my whole thoracic cavity down and back up. Really excellent way to facilitate engagement through the rhomboids and the lats, those upper back muscles. Really push away, contract, and push. Nice work. Okay, we get a little rest here, which is gonna allow me to ditch the sweatshirt because <laughs> I've generated a little bit of heat already. It's 58 degrees in the garage gym, so it's warming up quick. Pardon the mic for a second. Chance to show off the new oat swag. That's how I roll. <laughs> That's how you should be rolling too on those calves. They get pretty tight. If you want a shirt, hit me up. We're dishing them out. They're 25 bucks. They're awesome. We've got different colors, different sizes. And yeah, just a fun way to support and get the word about foam rolling out there. So more about this routine. We're gonna be on the mat the whole time. So you don't need to move around. We're just gonna post up here. We got Supermans, we got Neons, we got leg lifts, we got a couple other ones in there that are awesome. But we're starting with the full Superman. So we're laying in the prone position on the stomach. Superman. My hands are up overhead, my legs are out behind me. And in one motion, my goal is to lift my limbs off the ground, hold for a couple seconds, and then relax back to the floor. So to do this, I'm engaging the glutes and hamstrings to lift the hips, or rather the legs. And then I'm engaging my rhomboids, my lats, my traps. Get the upper body off the ground. Down slow, notice. It's not a ton of range of motion. And that's okay. stabilization phase it's important to go slow we're not rushing through these you should be holding that top range of motion for at least a couple seconds nice long hold to finish relax okay so 60 on 20 off that's gonna be the theme we're mostly gonna be alternating from prone to supine rotating back and forth so we got V-sit knee ins next. The V-sit, quite simply, is sitting here, creating the V with my thighs and my upper body, my torso. I'm bringing the knees in and then slowly extending out. In and out. Notice my heels are staying just above the ground the whole time and I'm getting this pumping action going. So like I mentioned, hip flexors are part of the core and admittedly, my hip flexors are a little tight today. Big run yesterday, followed up by a short lunge workout. We'll do it. <laughs> Notice I'm not moving my upper body a whole lot, meaning when I extend the legs, I'm not leaning way back. I'm really trying to stay upright with my posture the best that I can. And also, if your range of motion is limited and you can only work right here, that's okay. Just take it slow. And really, the more we can focus on that range of motion, better off we're gonna be down the road. Okay, rotating back over to the supine position, we got what's called bird dog, which is oftentimes done improperly, so we're gonna do it right, right now. And also, if you're missing some of these cues, don't worry, we're going through this four times. <laughs> we'll get plenty of practice. So bird dog, I'm doing opposite arm, opposite leg, Core is super engaged. I'm drawing in, I'm bracing all of our core foundation principles. And then simultaneously, extension of the leg and the hand. A lot of glute engagement, a lot of core engagement. <sighs> Setting it back down and then without rotating my hips, I'm alternating to the other side. <sighs> Notice the transition is the most important time to keep that core engaged. 
replacing, try to get your timing down. Notice how slow I'm going. Focus on your breathing, which you're probably hearing me do. <laughs> Generally, I like a inhale on the way up, exhale on the way down, but whatever works, sometimes I alternate. Good, make sure you're not over arching through the back, keeping a neutral spine by engaging that core. Leg lifts. Okay, we're on our rest interval now. <laughs> Might have overshot it there a little bit. I love those. Okay, laying down, leg lifts. We're gonna start from the up position. I'm working on keeping my lumbar spine planted into the floor. If that means you need to hang out in this position for the whole 60 seconds, I am okay with that. It also means if we're just doing little micro leg lifts, going down as much as we can while keeping the lumbar spine planted, excellent. I love it. More advanced, we're going all the way down the best we can. All the way back up. The key though is that lumbar engagement going real slow. There's a good chance by the fourth set of these, <laughs> it's gonna get a lot more difficult. Almost there, let's get a couple more. You're done in three, two, one. We'll call it there. <laughs> Gotta pace yourself. Rotating back over, so notice there is some rationale behind flipping back and forth. Helps get your heart rate up. High plank. Working different hands. systems, giving the arms, hands a break. All right, high plank, alternating knee ins. So all we're doing is holding the high plank, high plank. which if the knee in you hands. find gets too difficult, go ahead and just hold the high plank. But all I'm doing one leg at a time, driving this knee forward, trying to get close to my elbows, back to center. Just like with the bird dog, don't let your hips walk side to side. We're not rotating. We're really working on holding this plank. Driving forward. Keep that core engaged. Again, range of motion is just as important as activation. So really try to drive that knee the best you can which should mean you're going slow. Ten seconds. Almost there. You're done in three, two, one. Rest. Nice work. Okay, short rest, three more rounds. <laughs> We're getting through it, just a 40 second rest before we get right back into that same circuit. So hopefully after that first one, you're feeling some core engagement. You're feeling some hip flexor engagement. That's really what we're after with a routine like this. It's not about going fast. It's not about sweating, getting the heart rate up. We're gonna get that in our cardio programming. It's all about that neuromuscular activation. Okay, back to the full Superman. Again, this one can be tricky. It's not a lot of range of motion. I'm focusing on the activation. Good activation. Hold for a couple seconds. <sighs> then relax. Even though I'm using my glutes and my upper back to lift off the floor, it doesn't mean I'm disengaging my abdominals. I'm trying to draw that belly button in towards my spine. This is a core exercise, folks. Really a full body exercise. Number of repetitions does not matter. Very rarely do I focus on number of reps. Quality over quantity always. Okay, resting, switching sides. <laughs> it's really not as much of a rest as it is just getting into the next position. We got those V-sit knee-ins next, really working on 
that range of motion, that core activation. If your back starts to light up in this, you might need to adjust your posture or where your hands are. Knees in, extension. Really pulling those knees in with the core as best you can. Obviously the hip flexors are working. I'm feeling it today. But above everything else, this is a core exercise. I don't have a ton of weight in my hands. They're just kind of resting on the floor. I'm not doing any tricep dips. <laughs> Save that for another video. Just a couple more folks, hang in there. Nice work. Flipping it over again for the bird dog. Hopefully you're starting to sense that it's not about number of reps. It's not about the speed. Well, it is actually very much about the speed. We want to go slow. I'm going to over exaggerate this on this round of the bird dog. All fours, good stable position. Very slow extension. Hold. And then down slow, maintaining that spinal integrity. And then on the transition, I'm really being conscious of what my core and my spine are doing. A little off on my timing on that side. With this back leg, try not to let it turn out. If anything, try to keep this back toe pointed more towards your other foot to help keep the pelvis neutral. Trying to minimize rolling and opening. That's not what we're after. We're trying to stay square through the hips and the shoulders. Ten seconds left. Hang in there. Let's get one good 10 second rep here. Very slow. You're done. Arm by the ear. Two, Rest. Nice work. Okay. You know what's next. <laughs> Most people's favorite core exercise. Just kidding, not a leg lot of lifts. people love leg lifts. They are freaking tough. <sighs> Remember, it's all about the lumbar engagement. If you can fit your hands underneath your back, you're doing it wrong. If you need to modify to help that, you can put your hands underneath your hips. I'm okay with that, it might help. But ideally, I would rather you work here and just decrease range of motion and in time that will come. Try to keep your knees as straight as possible. You might think that since I'm the trainer, all of these are very easy for me. Not at all true. Especially these stability routines during high training volumes where I'm running 20 plus miles a week and doing 10,000 feet of elevation gain every week. This stuff gets tough. It's a good reminder that I need to integrate this more so into my daily or weekly routine. Final rep. Nice work. We got the knee ins next. If at any point this is your first time going through the Ponderosa core workout, if two rounds is enough, call it. It's all good. We don't want to increase our risk of injury. <laughs> We're really after the opposite here. You could also regress by just simply holding the plank. But I'm going to keep going for the knee ends here. Driving that knee forward. Slow on the switch. Notice my upper body is not moving. I'm not rocking forward and back with each one. I'm staying over my hands with the shoulders. Ten seconds left. Few more, hang in there, team.
<laughs> nice job. <laughs> Two more rounds. We're halfway through. Plus the warm up adds a little bit, but that's really an integral part of all of our workouts. If you are in the base camp workout or program, make sure you're following up this workout with our mobility routines at some point throughout the day. That really is the gold in this program. Of course, these stability routines are awesome. You're gonna get stronger, but more often than not, the number one thing people struggle with is their range of motion and mobility. So do not skip your mobility routines. That's how we roll at OAT, baby. All right. Superman, full Superman, here we go. <sighs> Lift, hold, good, engagement. <sighs> you could hold as long as you want, as long as it feels good. <sighs> really good glute engagement, upper back, core is still strong. <sighs> if you're only coming a little bit off the ground, <laughs> that is all right. Make sure we're not Lifting our neck, that's not the goal. These aren't cervical spine extensions. Nice job. You know what's next. We're rolling over <laughs> into the V-sit knee in. V-sit knee in. <clears throat> Chest up. Hopefully you're nice and warmed up by now. <clears throat> Getting ready for these. Getting that pumping action. All about range of motion. <sighs> Core engagement. If this is too difficult, the regression would simply be practicing holding the V-sit. It's totally fine, as long as we're focusing on that really good core engagement. Keeping those toes pointed up. Trying to go slow on the way out, best we can. Draw those knees in. Hold it. Nice work. All right, bird dog. Hopefully the bird dog is not the most difficult one in this workout for you. It's probably either the knee ends or the leg lifts. Maybe the high plank knee ends. <laughs> really, they're actually all pretty difficult if you do them right Bird with dog. intention. Bird dog, here we go. Really trying to get this arm up by the ear. Replace the hand. So even though this is a core routine, a lot of glute engagement, hamstring engagement, hip flexor, quad, upper back, which I would argue, and so would most fitness instructors around the world, those are all parts of your core. It's not just your abs. Nice work. Quick rest here. Another set of leg lifts. Gotta love it. Leg lifts. Again, if at the end of round three you're like, dude, I am smoked. My core is wrecked. Call it. It's all good. You're gonna see this workout again in the base camp program. And it'll be a really good assessment. To see how far you've come. Okay. Nice and slow. Slower the better on the way down. Come up a little bit quicker as long as you keep that lumbar spine planted. 
Also, I didn't mention this, and it probably goes without saying, but we're not coming all the way to the down to the ground and then relaxing. That's not what this is about. This isn't Shavasana. Although I do love a good Shavasana at the end of a mobility routine or yoga practice. Not really what we're after <laughs> in the Ponderosa core workout. Get a couple more good reps in here, down slow. Nice work. Flipping back over into the high plank. Final exercise of round three. High plank, alternating knees. Getting it done, team. Hang in there. This is when you got to start to dig deep. Let's knock it out. Again, if you're starting to get worked, just hold that high plank. All about going slow here, team. Really love this one. You know, even though it's not exactly sport specific, you might find a few times in your outdoor activities where you're actually moving your knees and hips and ankle and these various movements. Keep that core firing, engaged. work <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I'm feeling it round three start to really get that activation heart rates elevated a little bit got my first beat of sweat on that last set it's all good these routines are gold it's all <laughs> it all pays off down the road even if you're outside a lot doing all your favorite activities you will find that these exercises integrate directly into those. Next time you're walking uphill on a trail run on a hike, keep that core engaged, just like we're doing in all these exercises, including the full Superman. Here we go. Full engagement. Notice I've changed my breath pattern a little bit. I'm kind of liking this inhale. And then exhale on the way up, push and contract. Let's do a little longer hold here. Here, Inhale, and then hold it. And back down. I like that, let's do another one. Trying to get at least one more good rep here. <sighs> nice work. All right, rolling over. We got the knee in. <laughs> Hang in there. Just three Use sets the left. Hands. You can do it. We're almost done. All right, knees in nice and tight. I'm going to start a little early. Love getting those extra reps in. If you ever want to skip that rest interval, I'm all for it as long as you know you're going to make it all the way through. But sometimes I want a little extra time in these routines. But don't worry, the base camp program is periodized, which means as you go through it, it will get harder. The workouts get longer, the exercises get more challenging. But nothing that's out of the wheelhouse if you're following the program. Chest is up. Couple more reps.
Whew, nice work. When you are doing these workouts and you're not following along on YouTube, watch the tutorial videos. I go in depth on each exercise, two to three minutes long. If you need to refresh, watch a video. Even if you don't feel like you need a refresh, watch the video. You will certainly glean some new insights from it, new applications of the exercise. Remember, bird dog is not a rest interval. Even if it's a little bit easier, so much to focus on in the bird dog. Focus on keeping your pelvis neutral, drawing in, embracing through the core, which if you haven't seen those videos yet, they are coming up on your calendar. Be on the lookout. Nice job. <laughs> Two more sets. You already know what's next. Your favorite, the leg, leg lift. lift. All right, here we go. Legs up. Again, modify as necessary. I'm going to still work these full reps here. So notice on the breath here, I'm inhaling on the way down, and then exhale, contract. That's generally a good rule of thumb. You can mix it up, see what works for you. Ooh, starting to feel it in those lower abdominals. Get one more really good slow rep. You're done. Hold it. Two, one, nice job. Okay, last time for the knee ins. Final exercise, High 60 plan. seconds left. You can do it. <laughs> Here we go. High plank. Two, one. one leg at a High time, plank. nice and slow. <laughs> Again, quality over quantity, even on the last set. All of these themes apply. If you need to just hold the plank, I'm okay with that. Round four, set five. <laughs> I'm feeling it, I'm not gonna lie. And you should be too. Nice job, team. Great work, powering through that. Hopefully, wasn't too difficult. This should be somewhere between a four and a six. Quick and dirty, 33 minutes. Your core should be fired up. Follow this up with one of our mobility routines. Once again, my name is Mikey Bell, and we'll see you next time right here at Outdoor Adventure Training.